Uh, good morning again, or sorry, good afternoon again. Uh, before I get started, um, yesterday was able to get the presentation from Wednesday, and the presentation I'm about to go through is currently posted on the auditor's website, so at iant.gov settlements, where we have historically posted those, if you've got access to an electronic device, you can uh, bring the presentation up. The plan is still to send out the presentation um, probably, or maybe late today, maybe early tomorrow with the information we talked about yesterday, but it is available now. All right, so there are, a, the, the, the low it to lit transition is gonna have a pretty significant impact on essentially every document that wasn't excise related that the state auditor's office has used for either abstracts or, or settlements. Um, the, the goal for today's presentation is to focus on January 1st through about April 15th, so the, um, the spreadsheets, the, the documents, so the interactions our offices will have sort of uh, before the next conference. Uh, at the spring conference, we'll take a look at the changes that we'll see with respect to settlements. But that is a presentation for another day. Um, with this, during this transitional year, it's gonna be uh, more important than ever to make sure that the, to make sure that each county is using the most recent version of the spreadsheets, bless you, um, the most recent version of the spreadsheets, uh, there are some subtle changes, but they will be the difference between before and after. They'll look the same, they'll feel the same, they're designed to, that you'll be able to interact with them, but the new columns that we'll be adding, the, the new calculations that we'll be using will lead to pretty uh, dramatic differences if we're still using some of the older versions. Um, two, two, two. Oh, it'll also be important, oh, it'll also be important, um, to make sure that we understand some of the differences between 16 and 17. Uh, if, we were to, if we were to do a, a pure comparison between the abstract, or as we'll see, if we try to do a pure comparison between what was on the abstract, the columns that were included on last year, compared to the ones that we'll be using this year, it'll be, it'll be a little bit of, there'll be a pretty uh, remarkable difference. So uh, in, of the things I want to explain is to try, try to take you through some of those differences on uh, the documents that we'll still be using. All right, um, today, uh, at the risk of losing you guys early, um, today is very much an overview. Uh, in the next three to six months, we will be doing our best to over-communicate each one of these changes in the forms of emails and memos and examples and samples of the, the, the sort of changes that we're previewing. What I, want you to, what I want to do today is introduce these topics before you see them sort of purely in a text form so we can kind of interact with some of those changes. All right, so without sort of further ado, uh, these are the three main, three main areas that we're going to end up covering today. Now, uh, the monthly lit distributions processed by our office, the changes to the abstract template that we'll be using for 17, and then the impact of the lit changes on the uh, property tax relief rate calculation. Now, we know that uh, especially with the first one, all 92 counties are going to be impacted. But as we start to work our way through some of the other examples, your counties may not be configured this way as of October 6th, but as, you, as we start taking a look at uh, adopting some of these new options, um, you may end up becoming configured this way, and so the information may not be, um, the information may not be useful today, but it will potentially be useful as your county continues to uh, adopt new new ordinances. All right, but let's, let's start with the easy one. Let's, let's start at the beginning. So this is, this, this first section I want, uh, I want to cover because this is the first place where you're going to see the change. And so on January 1st or shortly thereafter, we'll be doing our first lit distribution of the year. Um, uh, what we're seeing here, uh, I imagine you've seen a version of this presentation before. It is hard to reinvent the wheel. Um, the, what this is designed to represent are the current LOIT funding, so, or what the top row is designed to represent are the current LOIT funding sources. So there are 13 buckets uh, that would potentially lead to a distribution. If I could ask for a show of hands, how many counties are currently receiving a LOIT distribution? Okay, let the record show all 92 hands, or all 92 counties raise their hands. Everybody is receiving at a low distribution from the state regardless of what buckets is, it's coming from. Now, many counties uh, are receiving multiple, uh, are receiving multiple, or are receiving funds from multiple 
but everybody is using at least one. So this first part of the presentation is really designed for, for everyone. Now, if the top row designs how it used to be configured, the, the bottom row d is designed to show how it will be configured. Um, what we see here is that there's no change in the amount of money you're receiving, just a change in sort of from a distribution standpoint, philosophically, how we sort of uh, interact with that info. Uh -huh. Now, if we were to take a look at an example from a, a sample county, we can see of the 13 possible buckets from the previous slide, this county is using six of those, right? So the first five that are associated with the Kajit, and then one of the three that's associated with the, seed, with the seeded. The column on the left represents the funding source, the column in the middle is the, um, the, the annual amount, and the column on the right, if you'll uh, pardon me a little bit of rounding to make the numbers easy, is the annual amount divided by 12. Now, what this is is a sample of the EFT notification. So on the, first, on the first day of the month, we process our distributions, and what you see on your end is a slide like this one that lets you know how much money you're receiving. Although it's a little bit on the small side, on the far right, we can see that the net on this slide is consistent with the, um, the total on the, on the previous one. In January, or each calendar year at the beginning of the year, at the same time that you receive your first distribution, the state auditor's office was providing you with what was essentially a Rosetta Stone, a, a file similar to this one um, that showed how much money you would be getting for the during the course of the year, and then a breakdown of each one of the funding sources that were used. So um, although this tells you how much you'll be receiving, the spreadsheet that was provided in January provided you a breakdown so that of the 1.7 you knew what part was the base, what part was the special, what part was the property tax relief. Now, this is what we're currently doing. Let's take a look at what we're changing to. Okay. So, with the idea we went from 13 separate funding sources down to five, we can see that based on the projections for that county, these are the five slide, or these are the five funding sources that we'll be looking at for 17. Um, the, the big change here isn't in the distribution as much as it is in the ACH notification that you'll be receiving. Again, I apologize, it's a little bit on the tiny side, but the payment message is the, is the, is the place where we see the most significant difference. The first part of the payment message now references what type of payment you'll re, you, that you'll be receiving. The second part of the payment message clearly identifies what part or what that's for. So this top line reads lit 2017-01, certified shares, so you know that without having to go to that uh, secondary spreadsheet. The third part of the payment message will also let you know exactly what fund the, this line should be deposited into, independent of the other ones. And in the case of certified shares, public safety, and economic development, there is also a note that you can see the DLGF site for additional information. So hopefully this is designed to, or hopefully this will make it easier to uh, take the amount of money that you are receiving from the state and then be able to map that to exactly where, it, what it can be used for and where it will need to be deposited. Okay. Okay. All right. So along those lines, and if you'll, we have to hit a, a slight tangent here for a moment, the state auditor's office is going to be much more interested in the fund balances relating to the LITs than we have been in the past. Now, this isn't necessarily from an audit standpoint. Lori assures me that State Board of Accounts does not need my help with that. Um, but this is more from a consistency standpoint. And what that comes from is a, a project that we started uh, last spring, the Property Tax Relief Fund Cleanup. Now, AOS went into this with the best of, best of intentions. but. Uh, to do it over again, we may handle that one sort of slightly differently. Although it is a, a project that definitely needs to be done, although it's something that we that it, that will be very important, the the timing on this one was was, was poorly conceived on my part, and the uh, sort of sharing with you what it was that we were trying to collect also would would handle differently to do over again. Now, what this is designed to do is with many of the existing low it funds in the process of being mothballed at the end of the year. We wanted to make sure that we had a, a solid grasp on places where uh, there were balances still remaining, right? So if we're going to switch to a new, if we're going to switch to using new funds, let's make sure that we have a plan for what we're going to do with the ending balances in some of the old funds. That was the, that was the idea. Um, but as we started to collect the information, the way I had laid out that questionnaire that we sent out 
we got some pretty unexpected values, and then the settlement happened, and then we blinked, and now we're at uh, the fall conference. What I want to do today is introduce the idea that we will revisit this topic of cleaning up the existing property tax relief funds, identifying places where there had been a balance, and we want to make sure that we are, that we are putting together a plan to move those uh, ending balances from the low at funds into a place, into their new uh, sort of lit counterparts. Okay. Uh, the goal for this one is summer of 2017, but more information will be coming once we start to uh, actually roll that process out. All right, so let's transition again from talking about the money moving out the door and talking about the fund balances. Let's talk about the abstract of the impact of this low it to lit change on the abstract. And I want to kind of do this again as a before and after to show you what the abstract looks like and why, it was, why those columns existed. And then based on the changes to lit, show you what the current version of the abstract will look like and sort of the differences between the two. Now, the, the big part of uh, talking about this transition is that not all counties are configured the same way. And so in looking at last year, there were 61 of the 92 counties that were offering some type of property tax relief. So you may or may not be as familiar with these fields on the abstract as we would be some of the others. Okay. So when we're talking about property tax relief from a low at standpoint, we're really focused on three of these buckets specifically. The Kajit relief, uh, the blue one fourth from the, from the left, the COAT relief, and then the, the seated homestead. Now, information relating to the calculation and usage of those property tax relief funds uh, were summarized into Section 1B and Section 5. This is just quick and dirty, the, an excerpt from the abstract itself showing where the uh, homestead and the residential values would be listed in Section 1B. Underneath, we've just got a, underneath we have a, uh, da, da, da a bigger uh, version of what those fields were named. The second place that we saw lowered information on the abstract was in section five. These are the, the sections, the columns, and the names that we were using for last year. Now, if we flash forward, uh, we can see that uh, under the lit structure, no, oh, I need to go back. Uh, I need to go back and try that again. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Uh, after there was a decision to use property tax relief, the county then had the decision to figure out how that property tax relief would be applied. The three options that they had to choose from were uh, homestead, qualified residential, and then all taxpayers e equally generally referred to as the, the property tax relief. Just apply it to everyone across the board. So regardless of what bucket we saw at the top, uh, those were the three options for property tax relief. With that in mind, we can see that on 33 and 34, we needed a, a way to show uh, the assessed values, sorry, the, da, 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 the net values for the homestead that would be included in 33 or 34. Okay. By comparison, in 16, there will be more than just those three options that we had previously had. We're up to six options for how, once you have your property tax relief, how it'll be applied, how it'll be applied. Now, the inclusion of those new options means that we needed new places on the abstract to, to house those values. And that's probably the largest, or, I'm sorry, that is the largest difference between what the abstract looked like last year and what the abstract will look like this year. So uh, right in the presentation, including the, the code citations we're looking at that provide a more thorough explanation of what each one of these options will be, uh, here's a listing of the six new options that we will see for next year. Okay. And so, Correspondingly, on the abstract, we'll see where in Section 1B there used to be the two options for the homestead and the, and the qualified residential. In 17, we are going to see seven options, uh, each corresponding with one of those new, each corresponding with one of those new uh, values. Also, in Section 5, although it looks like not only have we removed the, the five options that we saw from last year, we have also added those same seven options. So Section 1B and Section 5 both went through a pretty significant change so that we could account for all the new possibilities for how the property tax relief would be applied. Okay. 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 So this is where a comparison from last year's abstract to this year's abstract, if we were to go, it was the seventh column last year, how come it isn't the seventh column this year? Well, by changing section 1B, we have now moved the sort of the, the columns left and right to account for all the new sort of potential options. 
So although the columns will still be very much named the same, they may be over a little bit further one direction or the other um, because of the changes that we've made to the, the abstract template as a whole. Okay. All right. So let's, let's get into just the last part. Here we're, we're talking about the, um, the changes in the property tax relief calculation from we're talking about the changes in the property tax relief calculation from uh, 16 to 17. Uh, we have the, the process is very similar. Uh, we'll still be collecting the same information. This is still one of the prerequisite steps for us actually to provide you or that will need to be accomplished before we're able to provide you with the abstract. But did want to talk a little bit about the differences between how we did it last year and how we'll be doing it this year. Uh, we have also are in discussions with each of your tax and billing vendors to make sure they understand the change, to understand what we'll be collecting, how it is, and how it is that we will be collecting that one. And additionally, to say it again, as we start to get into the actual calculation and the, the back and forth uh, uh, during, the, during the calculation, we'll make sure that there are plenty of examples and memos. Um, you'll, you'll have as much information as we can share about these changes written and provided to you as we, as we begin the process. Now, although the general calculation will still be the same, there are four pretty significant differences or differences that are worth mentioning that I want to go through. Uh, the first one, like we saw earlier, where last year the three options for property tax relief were the, uh, the everyone, the homestead, and the qualified residential. This year we'll be using the designations. We'll be using these designations instead. So we'll be using the new lit terminology as we're calculating the property tax relief rates instead of using the instead of using the old ones okay the second part of this one is uh, right in line with the, what Courtney was talking about of this year AOS will be working to calculate and provide you the property tax relief designations that most accurately reflect how you were configured last year so as you are adopting new ones that will be ready for pay 18 in pay 17 we will be the State Auditor's Office will be providing you with a calculation that best simulates what you had done last year into the new bucket. So if you had a homestead last year, AOS will be providing you the rate as it is identified as a 1% this year. Now, it's going to be a little bit tricky as we calculate the qualified residential, but that's information that will come from the State Auditor's Office. It will be provided to you as we begin the process itself. The third, the third change in the calculation from last year deals with the property tax relief fund ending balances. Historically, when we went to calculate property tax relief, we would take the amount of money that we are distributing to you in the, in the upcoming year. Uh, we would add to that the property tax relief balance that we had from the beginning of the year, and we would come up with a rate accordingly. This year, we'll be starting with a beginning balance or an ending balance of zero. We'll just be focused on your rate will be calculated only on the amount of money that's projected to be um, distributed in the upcoming year. Uh, as we go through that cleanup process, as we start to transition those previous low it balances into their new lit counterparts, when we start to take a look at this for 2018, we'll be using the full property tax relief, but f the full property tax relief amount available. But for 17, we'll be starting with a balance of zero. Okay. The last change deals with the reserve total. As, as, as many of you know, as we are going through those property tax relief calculations, even we only ever, well, the rate that we provided was designed to give you, was only designed to distribute 98% of the funds available, with the 2% being held behind or being held out to, to uh, da, da, as a reserve for refunds or, as a reserve for refunds. Uh, that 2%, we are still trying to figure out what is the best rate we'll be using, um, whether it be 1%, whether it be half a percent. But that will be a change from last year. We can say pretty confidently going forward, it won't still be at the 2%. We'll still leave a reserve, um, but it just won't be as high as it had been in the past. The goal, be, the goal here being um, that we would make as much property tax relief available in the year. Uh, da, 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 da. The goal here being that we'd make as much property tax relief available as possible during each year. Okay. Okay. Um, the property tax relief calculation itself, there are a couple prereq files that we'll need before we can actually start the process. 
the first one comes from the state budget agency, who we're expecting about mid-November will have the, the final values of what property tax relief will be for the upcoming year. The second file is one that we had talked about, the state auditor's office figuring out the, the splits, the, the breakdown between the, the splits to be used for the, during this transitional year, uh, the, which we expect to have before the end of October. Uh, the third file that we'll need is the, certi the certified rate file that comes from DLGF who will, that we expect to see sometime in mid-January. And then the last file will be the file that we're working with your tax and billing vendors to create, the net assessed values by new AV type by taxing district, what we'll need to actually calculate the rate. Uh, for those, for the second one, well, for the first and second one, we should have a pretty good idea of the amount that we'll be planning to distribute. Uh, the way that we'll be, the, the rates that we'll be using during the transitional period. So even before we have the certified rates, we'll definitely be in communication to let you know what we're going to expect during the property tax relief uh, calculation. Now, I know that uh, following the settlement, there used to be a, a little bit of a, a break in the action between our two offices before we started the, the abstract, before we jumped right into the abstract. For this year, that, that, that timing is going to be uh, sort of reduced quite significantly to make sure that we have enough time to fully discuss any questions that you have about the transition, to take a look at how we came up with the rates that we'll be using to sort of prepare to um, process the abstract a as quickly as possible. Okay. And then this slide is just a sort of a, a, an extreme general, generalization of how we do the property tax relief calculation itself, um, talking about uh, the, how we use the, the prerequisite files to actually come up with the rate. Again, I uh, can't stress enough that once we actually get into the process, we'll be providing much more uh, thorough details to take you through uh, from beginning to end. Okay. So those are the three parts of, those are the three parts I wanted to cover. I mean, those are the three areas that we'll see, we'll, that our offices will have interaction on prior to the, the next time that we are live and in person. At the, at the spring conference, we'll take a look at how the forms associated with the settlement submissions are going to be impacted by the LOA to LIT change. With that, I will turn it over to Lori, our cleanup hitter.